Hey guys, did everyone read this book? They're if like, you haven't, what you really are should. We doing it's here? Incredibly <laughs> entertaining. Um, so tell me first of all about the process of writing this book. Did it just come to you? Hey, I want to sit down and write a book, or have you been collecting these stories in your your head? I'm sure you have. Uh, well, I had a few of the stories already, um, and I was writing for uh, Playboy.com at the time, and the editor there suggested that I, you know, sort of get my shit together and put a book proposal out. Um, so I spoke to my agents and. They put me in contact with, you know, the book person at my agency, and we went out with the proposal. Um, and, you know, most people were like, what? Is, this is insane. I mean, what is this? This is, like, stories about <laughs> telling people that they were molested and prostitution and making your husband proposition people for blowjobs. I mean, it was just, like, all over the place, crazy <laughs> shenanigans of, you know, somebody in their mid-20s. Um, and St. Martin's Press, you know, they were sort of bold enough to, to give me a shot, and, and it all worked out. So, yeah, uh, I would say that um, maybe a fourth of the book, I had an idea of what it was going to be. And then as I started writing, the rest of it kind of came to me. What I love about it is that, you know, you talk about serious things that have happened in your life, but yeah. in a funny way. Yeah. And I know... Um, you battled an eating disorder. Yeah. Um, you have a crazy mother yes. um, who sounds amazing because I have yeah. a crazy mother too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so tell me about that and how you wanted it to be a little more lighthearted, but touch on serious things. Well, I didn't want to write a book that was just funny because I don't. I, 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 that's not interesting to me. I mean, you know, even when you're tweeting, I think it's boring if it's just a joke. I I, I love tweets that sort of tell me something about who that person is. And I knew, you know, if I was going to talk about, if I was going to, if I was going to write a mem, if I was going to write a memoir, I wanted to there to be a chapter about my mom and my dad, my sister, just to fully sort of paint the picture of why I am the psychopath I am, <laughs> not like as like, you know, an excuse for my behavior, but I wanted to make sure people had the right impression. Um, so yeah, so I want I talked about. Uh, my mom telling me at 15 that I needed a, needed a fake idea if I wanted to keep hanging out with her. I talked all about their divorces and, um, you know, uh, yeah, my eating disorder, my weird German ex-boyfriend. Um, you know, it was an eclectic mix. It's a cornucopia of crazy, you guys. <laughs> I love it. That was Bruno, right? You're crazy. Yes. <laughs> where is he? I need where to find him. If anybody has any insights into where he might be hiding, please get in touch with me. And so when you sat down to like think about all the stories you wanted to write, did they come to your head like right away or were there missing pieces that you had to be like? No. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, not with this book. Now I'm writing a second book and, and I have a lot of vacant spots, <laughs> which is <laughs> very frustrating. And so what is, uh, you're married to Jason Biggs, who we all mm -hmm. know is a great comedian as well. Um, tell me about what he thought about the book, and did he think you were, you know, Well, there crazy? were things he learned as I was writing. You know, I'd say, okay, well, there's this chapter about your ex-girlfriend, but I don't want you to read it until, you know, the book is complete, and you can look at a galley, and then tell me, before it goes to print, what you might want me to omit. Um, so there were things in the, you know, along the way that he, were revealed to him that he wasn't completely thrilled with. But I think at that point, you know, I was able to paint them in a way that it was all fun and games and I was hiding in the trunk of a car and maybe we were hiking Runyon Canyon together, but whatever, don't worry about it. Uh, so yeah, he was, I think there was some distance at that point where he was able to laugh. When he first, when it was happening and he sort of caught wind of the fact that I was having this emotional affair with his ex-girlfriend behind his back, that was a point of contention in our group therapy sessions, for sure. And I know that you are, you did an audio book for this book so that we can actually hear the yes. stories from your point of view, which I yeah. love. So tell me about the process of reading the book out loud and having it taped. Well, reading the book out loud, can I cuss? 
Uh, oh, the reading of the book out loud fucking is the worst thing I've ever done in my life. It's so annoying because it takes hours and hours and you're, you know, in this booth and it, it feels like looping when, when you're, you know, when you're going back and redoing audio for, let's say, a movie. If you, if they, you know, you have a line and it's off camera, you have to come back in and, you know, fix that later. So it felt like looping for three weeks straight where I'm just stuck in a booth by myself having to hear you know, all of the mistakes that I made, all of the things that, like, I wish I could change, but I can't. Um, and the hard part was I kind of did everybody's voice. So, like, my Jersey sister-in-law, you know, she's always, she's, like, an insane person. And I describe her in the book as being Joe Pesci in the body of a mini Joe Pesci. And she's always like, are you fucking kidding me with that one? You know, she has this like really intense, and it's, I don't talk that way. So as I'm doing it, I'm like, this is gonna, the mo going to be the most mortifying thing I've ever put into the, the world because it's like me doing a half-assed accent of like most of the people in my life. Uh, so yeah, we'll see how it turns out. I'm not gonna, I don't think I'll be listening to it anytime soon now that it's out. Uh, but you know, it, it was, it's, in, it's definitely worth getting your hands on. Jason's great in it. Cause I would love to hear it from your, yeah. your perspective in it, yeah. your voice. Cause when I read it, of course I'm laughing out loud. Yeah. But I'm like, who is the girl behind this book? Yes. I want to know a little bit more about her. And I think it changes it because I think when you read the book, oftentimes people come up to me and they say, Oh God, I expected you to be so much harder, so much more aggressive because of just some of the views I express in the book. Um, but when you read it, it, when you hear it in my own words, I think you get the sense that really I'm, I'm earnest in sort of these crazy half-baked schemes and ideas. It's not meant to, to be malicious. So it helps. And what was it like to be on the bestsellers list? And did that surprise you? Were you oh. pumped? Well, sure yeah, it surprised me because I didn't know, I had nothing, no, you know, experience to sort of know what would constitute being, the book being a bestseller. Uh, so that week I was waiting and uh, I knew that, you know, maybe it was a possibility, but when I got the call from my agent in the car, I think I almost drove the car off the road. I was like, what? What do you mean? So, like, I'm on the list, you know, like, I'm, my name's really there. Um, and it, that was really exciting. I think it finally made me feel like I'd accomplished something in my life. I was like, oh, good. I finally have an identity. <laughs> well, what I love about you is that you, your motto basically is embrace the crazy. I mean, yeah. all of us women and men, come on, men are a little crazy too, not just women. Yeah. But I love that. And so tell me about that approach and embracing the crazy in your own life, in your personal life. Oh, yeah. Well, I just, I don't want to lie about who I am. I don't think that there's any point in pretending that I'm not, uh, you know, what we all are, you know, when you kind of like shed that veneer and you're at home and you're, you know, in your living room Googling, you know, pictures of somebody you've never met before. <laughs> I, I, I just, I don't feel like I'm, I don't, I, th I just think I'm not, embarrassed about admitting it because I feel like secretly everybody's just like me. Maybe that's totally yeah. narcissistic. But I just kind of believe that we all have these feelings. So I'm just putting it out there. Well, what I love is that you definitely embrace the crazy on social media. Um, yes. At Huffington Post, we love following you. Uh, <laughs> and especially your little bachelor tweets or just yeah. your Instagram random pictures. Uh, <laughs> tell me about your social media approach. And is there anything that you're Afraid of oversharing? Uh, well, I'm afraid of posting pictures of my son's face because I have this fear that like somebody's gonna see how beautiful he is and then try to take him from me. Um, uh, but other than that, I'll pretty much post anything. I n I don't hold a lot back in that department. I don't know. There's nothing that really that I won't post, which sort of gets me in trouble in my marriage, but yeah. So kind of clearly you am. love watching The Bachelor. What other shows are you just, you know, tweeting away, live tweeting away at? Uh, I only live tweet The Bachelor just because I don't have the time with a baby to really do anything else. <laughs> uh, but yeah, The Bachelor is one of those things that's sort of must-see TV for me.
<laughs> what do you think about this season? We were talking about it a little bit backstage. I feel like she has the weirdest lip injections going on. <laughs> I don't get those. Like, why is the bottom lips like a lumpy pillow? It's so weird. Yeah, that's I'm, true. I never even noticed I don't that. care about Botox and filler and all of that stuff. But I, want, I feel like it should look good. Yeah. And I know definitely this week the guys are kind of showing their true colors. And yes. I feel like the season is definitely a bit different than we've seen in the past. Yeah, and the thing I do not like about this season is that they always ended on a cliffhanger. I hate, it's like, no, she needs to give a rose and somebody needs to get the fuck out of there. I'm watching this show because I like watching people get broken up with. So I don't want to tune in and have her just like walk around like seeking out drama. Like something's going on in this room. You guys are disrespecting me and then like we have to wait until next week to see how she handles it yeah. that's annoying to me I know this season that's definitely a bit different and annoying yeah um, do you see a front runner in your head that might win I see like the same like I feel like they're all the same sort of I don't know same white trainer from insert some midwest town I, I don't know they all seem like they're the same guy to me Except Clint does need Botox. Yeah. I can't with the, that brow. Oh, my God. <laughs> so speaking of all these people, and there are people in the book that you mention and things like that, have you gotten any pushback from haters or just people who you've written about that are like, why did you include me in this book and you didn't tell me? Oh. Um, Bruno, maybe? No, because I can't find him. He's cut me out of his life. No, but I hope that certain people are mad when they open it and see that I've completely... <laughs> taken their lives <laughs> and, uh, you know, exposed them. Um, n I, I didn't get, you know, I opened up a separate LLC because I was so afraid of being sued when the book came out because you go through so many lawyers and then, you know, I hired my own lawyers on top of the ones provided by uh, St. Martin's because it's so scary. And I realized go when we had to comb through each story, it's easier to tell the truth than to even try to mask somebody's identity because then they can come back and say, you know, that's defamation of character. You know, it, it, you, know you can't say that I had a fake chin. <laughs> I'm like, well, I didn't want to say you had a crazy boob job. I was doing you a favor. Uh, yeah, so I, I had to just kind of put it out there and, and sort of hope for the best. <laughs> And what is the second book going to be about? Is it going to kind of follow up, or are you going well, to take the, a totally different approach? The second book is, I think, a bit heavier. It's just there's more, uh, you know, in this book I do talk about, you know, sort of the pain of my own childhood and all of this stuff. But the, the second book gets more into that because it's all about fear and about uh, becoming a mother and how... Uh, I'm just like not completely comfortable in um, the idea that I, I I just feel like I'm gonna like mess up somehow or you know I don't know that how to assume the role of being this caretaker that can sort of make everything okay and the responsibility and the just like the weight and the guilt that kind of goes with being a mom, like no matter where you are, what you're doing, even sitting here right now, I'm like, am I a good parent? Like, am I really the best that he gets? <laughs> like, is it, can, can I do this better? Uh, and sort of th that led me on this crazy journey where my, my fears manifested in all sorts of crazy ways where I thought my house was haunted and then I needed to like hire a realtor to sell it behind Jason's back. And then I ended up like in the mountains of Morocco buying rugs from a co-op of women that, you know, didn't speak English. I mean, it just got, it just gets insane. So, uh, yeah, the next book is really just about the journey that I take to, uh, you know, conquer those external demons so that I can really, uh, you know, conquer the ones within and, and be that hero for my son. Yeah, and it's interesting because in the first book you talk a lot about your parents and yeah. how you were raised. Um, I'm curious at how you took, you know, your parents and the way you were raised and yeah. put it towards Sid and yeah. and if you use any of that crazy because you clearly came out perfectly fine. You know what I mean? <laughs> perfectly fine. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> no, I, yeah, I definitely, I think that whatever your issue is with your parents, 
it's what the thing that you focus on the most with your child. It's like, okay, I'm not going to do that to them. But inevitably, you end up doing something to them. Like one day, he's going to come to me and say, why did you post 500 naked pictures of me on Instagram? I want to break up with you. And I also like am moving out and I'm going to get married and uh, you can't live with me. <laughs> Or like live blog my birth. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, exactly. But that's the funny thing. People think I live tweeted his birth when really it's just I had a collection of videos we took, you know, over the course of 48 hours. And, you know, I posted a couple of them maybe a few days later. But, a, <laughs> but I didn't show him. But people him. are like, she's giving birth yeah, and people she's were live mad at blogging me. her birth. People were she's so mad. She's in the delivery room. <laughs> yes. Which would have been great. But either way, I love that oh my you God. shared that. I was in too much pain to... You're a real woman and sharing your real experiences. I found yeah. it great. And I love how people are like, you're oversharing. I mean, let's ignore the fact that we're on your Instagram looking yeah, for things about your life. For the update of the but post. But you're oversharing. You're giving us too much now. And then speaking of kids, are you, are you and Jason planning on having any more kids or one's enough? <laughs> yeah, I think I have to have another kid because I don't want Sid to be a total dick. He <laughs> sort of controls my life. He's like a little, just, I don't understand. I mean, he is like a little dictator. And he's not really the baby that I picture. <laughs> Like, I don't mean it in a bad way, but he kind of, like, has a toot with me a lot. And I think it's because we give him whatever he wants. We're just like, okay, well, well, what do you need? Do you want something else? Like, are you happy? You know, we're just, you know, parents of our generation. And, uh, and yeah, I have to have another kid because I have to just sort of. Well, I love that you posted recently on Instagram that his tantrums are very much like he lays down on the ground and then so oh, you... Oh, can I please do a tantrum? <laughs> yes, I, I want to... Okay, this is how Sid does a tantrum. <laughs> He'll be like, so here, take this from me. Be like, you can't... No, here, take, I'll hold this. Now tell me that you want your mic back. Well, you're, now you have to just take it from me. Ah! Then he goes like this and he's like... Ah! And then he just goes head down. I don't know why. Ah! And then he flips and he's like, ah! and then he just starts doing this. I and what do you do? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I, I don't be understand. There, like, You're oh not my, God, my kid. My like, I never did that shit. I don't know. It's just Beautiful. So I know why you're an actress now. Weird. Talented. Can we give her a round of applause <laughs> for that little stunt? And we just like stare at him. We're like, okay, well. Whenever you work your shit out, we'll be here. Just, like, take your time. Go through your process. Maybe if you have two, they'll do it together, or the other one might tame him down a little bit and be oh his my buddy. God. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. So I definitely want to open it up to some audience questions. Uh, so raise your hands. Oh, we have a lot. Hi. Hi. Um, first, wanted to say I love the book. Thank you. And I know you said you're working on a second book, but yeah. would you ever consider writing fiction? Uh, well, you know, I turned this last book, uh, Sony optioned the, the book, and I wrote the pilot for the book. Uh, and, you know, there's defi it's definitely a fictionalized account of what went down, <laughs> for sure. Uh, and so, you know, that's kind of fun. But... I don't know if I would write a book that wasn't, uh, I don't know. It would be so hard because all I want to do is like talk about my parents. <laughs> uh, so it would be hard to like, I don't know, not. I think in script form, it's easier for me to do that. Hi. Hi. Um, clearly you don't take any crap from anyone. Um, <laughs> but what was it like being a woman and working for Playboy? Uh, well, I was working for all women there, ironically. I didn't deal with any men. So um, it was great. And the woman, uh, Melissa Bull, that was in charge of, you know, my stuff for most of the time I was there, uh, was such a feminist and so supportive. And I, I didn't really deal with anyone saying, like, could you just, like, take your top off for a second? It wasn't that. It wasn't that at all. Uh, they, were, they were great. Anyone else out there? Hi, with these books, will it um, inspire you to um, maybe like do your own sitcom or movie? Because I feel like it would be like really, really good. I can totally picture it. 
Uh, well, we did. So after the book was optioned by Sony, I wrote the script and, it, and then we sold it to ABC. Um, so we did I Like You Just The Way I Am as a pilot, which did not go. But um, but we'll see. We try it's it again. interesting. Yeah. yeah. When you write something, it's never dead. It's so different from acting. You know, with acting, when I wouldn't get a job, I'm like, what the fuck? Now I have to watch somebody else do it. And it's just, you know, it was devastating. But when you write something, it's yours. So it's like, if they're not going to do it, you still own it. Nobody can really do it without you. Um, and I love the power in that. <laughs> so maybe. I, it, we'll see what happens. It's still, it's still floating around. How do you go about, like, finding acting gigs that you know, you're passionate about and what makes you kind of I don't you know, jump I on don't board. like acting gigs <laughs> um I don't know I spent the majority of you know my life acting and trying to get acting jobs uh the minute I started writing I I something clicked in me and I was just like why would I ever go back to being in a you know in that position where I'm facilitating somebody else's story, it's so much more rewarding to be the one writing, I mean, just like in the driver's seat of it, uh, that, you know, now when I do act, you know, like for instance, I, I did Girls, and that was incredible because I trust Lena's vision and I think she's, you know, an incredible talent. But oftentimes now I'll see stuff, I'm like, what? I, it's not worth it. It's not worth me going in and groveling like, please, me, pick me, when it's not even something that, uh, you know, I'd rather be living in the stories of my book. <laughs> I'd rather be choosing my own adventure. Did we have any out there? We have time for one more. One more. Anybody has a question? Well, I always have a question, so we know that. Um, <laughs> what are the female comedians that are inspiring you or that you think are, you know, stepping up their game in, in the business? Well, I think unequivocally, Chelsea Handler is one of just, I think she is just I iconic and incredible and, and such just, I, I think she's changed comedy for women. I think, I don't believe that I would have a book if it weren't for Chelsea. She was the first person to do it. And uh, I was lucky enough to meet her when I, I was 25 years old. And we were working on a crazy indie together. And I remember when her first book came out, and we would go into Barnes and Noble and like try to put it up at the front and have people uh, buy it. You know, nobody knew who she was. But she, I just think the things that she does are, you know, she's, she's, groundbreaking and she's paved the way for so many she's paved the way for Amy Schumer for Lena for all of these women I really think that uh you know we all owe a lot to Chelsea yeah and everyone who hasn't read this book should pick it up it is in paperback and I know I want the audio because I need to, <laughs> like when I'm driving just listen so to there's this. one Although I might get in an accident I have to tell you there's one line that's so absurd this is so horrible but Jason did all of his own you know dialogue in, in the audio and I would have to coach him I'd be like no that's not how you sound in my head he's like an accomplished actor that's like worked with Woody Allen and I'm like no Jason that's not good enough go back and he wanted to murder me for, you know, days on end when I keep him in the booth, making him redo it. But then there's one line, so bad, but he's like, can I just say that line too? And it's of like a weird satanic cult that was like, I thought was living next door to my house in Hollywood Hills. And the line is, he goes, let Jesus fuck you. <laughs> I'm like, he's like, what does that even mean? I said, I don't know, but just please do it because I don't want to have to do it. It sounds like the perfect day in the booth. Mm -hmm. It was like a little date yeah. day. So let Jesus fuck you. Yeah. I'd like to leave, we'll end on that I'd like note. to leave you guys with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for being here and thank you all for being here. And make sure to pick up the book. Thank you. Thanks, Jenna. <laughs>